Well, on my morning walk out here in the Arizona desert, I found this. I, I think this is one of the best ones I've seen in the desert. But this one, I think it has some symbolism that we need to know about. First of all, we should be very respectful not to walk in there because you can get really bad, bad stuff happening. Wow. This symbol right here, the evil eye, that's a Wiccan thing. W Wiccans are different from witches. Witches use spells and... By the way, I don't, I'm not one of those guys. I just looked this up yesterday after finding <laughs> this. I Googled it. Witches use spells and potions. Wiccans just use this evil eye. They look at you and you get bad karma. Really? Yeah. So what did you what is what do you think this structure is? What what is it doing? Well what I really think this is is that somebody who didn't have anything to do in the desert just said, Oh hey, let's be artistic. And uh, it does look beautiful. I think they succeeded. Hey, there's another thing over here you got to see, though. All right. Those things over there. This one, first of all, smoke coming out of the campfire. Wow. Or maybe it's a snake. I think it's a snake. But if you look at it a little closer, yeah. Here's the head, here's the body, here's the tail. Oh, you're right. Huh? Yes. Isn't that cool? Very cool. Over here is a, a lizard or a turtle. I haven't decided. Oh, I gotta say turtle. Yeah? Yeah. And then this one. If you look at it from this way, it's like a cat or a dog or a, a mirror cat, maybe. It sure is. And the white rocks say, love you. Oh, it does. See, this is going to be roped off someday and a, a tourist attraction. Yeah. <laughs> a, a state park sometime in the future. You know what? Hundreds of years from now. I... Um, I didn't see the love you when I was here yesterday. So it seems pretty I don't peaceful. Mean it wasn't there. I mean, I, I just didn't recognize what it said. Well, thank you so much for that. Let me get another look in on this. Oh, who put this bottle here? Me. Horrible. Horrible. That was me. Isn't this neat, though? This is. I'm going to take a couple of nice shots. Well, thank you for the info. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. What do we have here? I don't know. I don't remember seeing it. Uh, sure we went the right way. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> well, we are about uh, four miles from camp on the bicycle and the tricycle. Camp's way back down that way. The road is rough but doable. This is our choyo. They call them the jumping cactus because if you get anywhere near close, you're going to get a sp Bike in you. You're pretty sure we're on the right road? Yep, I'm pretty darn sure. I just put, I don't remember these, but. Well, let's uh, continue on. If, if my uh, thoughts are correct, it's not too far from here. So uh, I, I strongly urge us to go further. <laughs> <laughs> The trike is performing admirably well. I'm really pleased with it. I think it probably rides rougher than a bicycle because 
with the two spread out back tires, I'm hitting more rocks than a bicycle would be going right down the center. But it's not um, terribly uncomfortable. I'm enjoying the ride. I am having trouble on this hill. I uh, lost traction and Gunner just passed me because he's pedaling. He got traction on the back wheels. So I'm trying to pedal and I am making it. But it's hard to pedal once you stop. And I think I've probably got off here and had to push it along a little bit until I got going again. But that hill is a lot steeper than it looks in the video. Places like this coming up at the top of this little rise where the road is not level, it's leaning way to the right. You have to lean a lot on the trike because um, one wheel will come off the ground. Seems counterintuitive with this compared to a bicycle. In a bicycle, when you want to turn to the left, you're going to lean to the left and steer to the left, and it's the leaning that makes you turn as much as the steering. If you're on a bicycle and you want to go straight and it's not level, you're going to lean a little bit uphill and steer a little bit downhill. It's very slight and probably unconscious, but that makes you go straight. With this, it just doesn't work that way, and it takes quite a while to get used to how it does work. Um, your inside wheel will come off the ground if you don't lean into the turn, but the leaning doesn't make you turn. You should just get a trike and try this out for yourself. Well, we made it to the stone cabin. And the word is, talking to a guy who has a gold claim up here that we talked to on the road up here, that uh, this was built by the Spanish back in the 1500s. Well, yeah. I'm not sure that I believe that but he said there's a wall down there built by the spanish also so maybe huh. stone cabin now let's just take a close look at the window frame here okay so 1500s that wasn't made in the 1500s that was made by a saw. <laughs> well, I don't know. No, maybe not. If the wood split right, it looks like a real straight grain. Uh, no. No, 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 no. Look at that. Look at, the nail. Look at that nail. Yep. That nail's from like... Uh, a hardware store. But the, the, this could be aftermarket, though. This could have been built at one time. Somebody put it in later? Maybe. Because this is a manufactured nail. And there's another one right there. So, well, discount the uh, the lumber. Well, and what about this? This ain't like adobe. This is concrete. You're, well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know, but what is it? Oh, no, it's, no, it's not. What is it? It's no, that's that could be. Well, it comes off pretty easy. That could be old, but oh, a geocache. Really? How'd you know this? I've been here before. Oh, of course. Did you put something in it? Um, let's see what it says. Don't, isn't that what happens with the geocache? You put something in it, or take something and leave something, or. Oh, you sign your name. Is your name in there? Um, I don't think I signed this one. Let me see. Um, 
122 Vern. Is that one of the guys you were with? Well, it must have been. I'm trying to remember. Huh. But oh, you know, it was uh, the guy that's camped across from you. What's? Oh, there's a pen right there. Oh, okay. Well, they must have dropped it. Here you go. Um, sign your name. So, uh, what's the guy with the A-frame tent? Gene. Gene. Does that say Gene? No. Anyway, what's this? A, an iron pipe in the wall. With threads on it. Well, that could have been put in later too, but I'm starting to doubt this was built by the Spanish. Oh, here's another tip-off. Have you ever been to Tulum? Or a pyramid? Uh, like in Egypt? No. People used to be about this tall. Oh, that's true. Just, the Spaniards would never build a doorway that tall. That's true. I don't think. <laughs> but I'm not an archaeologist or an anthropologist. If I had a little tiny pen or a pencil, I'd put it in here instead of having this big thing. Well, anyway, there you go. Well, it's fun to explore no matter who built this cabin. Ah, gold mine. Find a gold mine? Yeah. Why would you build a cabin if you weren't mining for gold out here? Mm. Oh, there's a bunch of equipment over there, too. Oh, yeah. Yep. Well, I wouldn't mind looking for some gold, but I went gold panning in Alaska. Uh -huh. It's hard work. Skeletor. Yeah. There's no name on here <laughs> as a claimant. So we can put our name on there. No, I think it's faded off. It says... Yeah, it was on there at yeah. one time. Well, that was a good idea, though. I know. Federal mining claim, no prospecting. All persons are warned that disturbances of the monuments, surfaces, or improvements on this claim... Or the claimant will result in their prosecution under the appropriate state and federal statutes. You know what we should put on there? What? Major Hooligan. <laughs> Isn't that what, it was on his hat, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's an amazing bicycle. Yeah, thank you. A $7,000 bicycle. Yeah, $7,000. And it weighs about the same as one of my tires without the rim. They use these, where these bikes started was in Alaska. Up yeah? North in Canada, because they guys that rode uh, road bikes they couldn't ride their road bikes in the, in the winter so these came about 20 years ago and you can go through snow you know four or five inches deep it's all carbon fiber carbon fiber carbon fiber spoke oh my gosh look at this how the shocks how the work i think didn't they used to do that on corvettes with leaf springs they did yep That's, wow yeah this is the this is what absorbs it, and like I say, it's not really good for uh, real technical riding if you yeah. jump stumps and stuff like that, because it doesn't have that much travel, but for gravel roads, it's perfect. It wow. A lot of cushion. How much air pressure do you have? Five PSI. Five. Four, four and a half to five. Yeah. Wow. Well, hey, thanks for showing us. You're welcome, sir. Yeah, have a good time. What's your name? My name's Phil. Thank you, Phil. I'm Jerry. Jerry, nice meeting you guys. Gunner. Gunner, yeah. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.